Hey everyone, how's it going? Uh, welcome back to the channel. Um, for those of you that have been following my channel for a while, you realize, you know that I spend a lot of time building RC airplanes. Now, what you may not know is that this channel originally started uh, for astronomy. i am uh, been in amateur astronomy for a long time. I worked in aerospace and space exploration as a machinist in my manufacturing career. So one of the things I used to do in the past was build telescopes for a hobby. So when NAJ sent me this Max 4 laser, I realized that the additional power and cutting capability of this uh, pretty cool tool would enable me to cut heavier materials. And so one of the things I decided to do was to repurpose some optics from a telescope I had made 20 plus years ago and build a new telescope. So since they sent me this great tool, I'm gonna use it and uh, I'm gonna build a telescope. So here we go. In general, there are three basic types of telescopes, refractors, reflectors, and candidioptric, which are also known as compound telescopes. So a refractor is probably the most recognizable type of telescope. These were made um, most famous by Galileo back in 1609, 1610, used these refractors to look out into the universe and really open up our eyes to the possibility of other worlds. Um, it, the name kind of tells you how it functions. It's a refractor, so refract means to bend. So what this uses is a glass lens and it bends the light that comes in through the glass in the front of the telescope. That light is bent into a conical shape and concentrated to the eyepiece. The eyepiece is what actually controls the magnification for a telescope. Um, you can think of telescopes as really just a funnel or a bucket that collects photons of light, concentrates it to a focus point, and the eyepiece is what actually brings it to your eye. Now, a reflecting telescope is a little bit different. It uses mirrors instead of lenses to bend that light. So this is a reflecting telescope, Unistellar EvoScope 1. I think it's about 114 millimeter diameter primary objective or the primary mirror. And if you look inside the tube, you can see the mirror down in the bottom of the tube. So the light goes in there, it's bent into a conical shape and that image, those photons of light are concentrated so you can have resolution and brightness um, when you're looking at an image of a distant object. Now, this is a little bit different type of telescope. This is a smart telescope. So it doesn't take the light to an, an eyepiece. It takes it to a sensor. And that sensor can be viewed on a uh, telephone or an iPad or any kind of screen. So this is a smart telescope, which is a reflecting telescope. Now, a catadioptric is kind of a hybrid. It uses lenses and mirrors to bring the light in. So this is a um, 95 millimeter Maxitov uh, Cassegrain telescope, which I built probably 20 plus years ago. So you can see it has a, a lens in the front and a, reflect, refracting, a reflecting mirror in the bottom of the tube there. So this is kind of a hybrid, best of both worlds, shorter uh, tube assembly, even for a long focal length set of optics. So these are the three basic types of telescopes. Now the one we're gonna be building is a six inch diameter, 152 millimeter diameter F10. That's the focal ratio. So you can multiply the ratio by the diameter of the mirror and it's gonna be about a 60 inch focal length telescope, reflecting telescope. So we're building a six inch F10 Newtonian reflector. So uh, yeah, let's keep going. You start with the telescope mirror. This mirror, made of glass and coated with a thin layer of aluminum, has a concave parabolic or spherical shape. The one I'm using has a 6 inch diameter with a focal ratio of 10. Multiply these numbers and you have a focal length of 60 inches. Mount the mirror on a holder and place it into a tube. This tube provides the structure of the op optical assembly and keeps stray light out of the light path. You can use metal, wood, or even sauna tube which is a heavy cardboard cylinder for pouring concrete columns. Light enters the tube from a distant object like a star, galaxy, or nebula, and it gets concentrated to a single point. The distance from the face of the mirror to the focal point is the focal length. You'll need a small elliptical flat mirror placed in the light path. Most often the primary and secondary mirror are sold in sets. This small mirror, placed at a 45 degree angle, will project the light path out of the side of the telescope tube. The light path will pass through the focuser and the eyepiece, which is where you'll be looking to see the object. Now, configuring this light path is about the only math you need to know when building this type of telescope. The distance from the front face of the primary to the center of the secondary, plus the distance from the secondary to the top of the eyepiece at the center of the focuser travel, 
needs to match the focal length. For my tube assembly, I decided to use quarter inch by three and a half inch solid oak wood planks. Um, this way I could make a two sectioned lower tube assembly and make it 10 sided. That way I can have some mounting for my altitude bearings and it saves me a little bit of money on wood because of the narrow width of the slats. So these are the oak slats that I cut out to um, form the bottom half of my tube assembly. And I've kind of done a box shape where they're keyed together. And if you look at them when they're all aligned, I've uh, used the engraver, the NAJ, to engrave the Northern Constellations on the slats here. So you can see Orion, there's uh, Sirius and Canis Major, the Gemini Twins up here, Taurus the Bull. So these slats are going to form the bottom of my lower tube assembly. Now I'm mounting all of the oak pieces into three separate rings made out of half inch birch plywood. Now when I did the initial testing with the laser, you could blast through half inch plywood pretty easily in one or two passes, but I realized that the edges of the wood, the half inch wood, came out pretty charred and sometimes it left voids. And I think the different grain directions and the glue kind of played havoc with the cut. So I realized that taking a lot of passes at a relatively high speed and high power really gave me the best finish on the edges of all of the rings. Now the two sections of the lower tube assembly are hold together solely with wood glue. So I really, it was really important for me to get good surface quality on the edges of all the cuts. I designed these 3D printed clamps out of tough PLA and printed them on my Prusa MK3S Plus 3D printer, which I love. Things are workhorse. I've been using it for four years and I, I love that Prusa 3D printer. Um, I made these clamps and I tried to design them so that I can print them as much as possible without any supports. Maybe a little brim down there for the, the smaller edges, but at least amount of supports as possible. So I designed specifically for 3D printing. Now these clamps hold half inch dowel rods. And these four foot rods are going to hold the upper spider assembly, which holds the secondary mirror and connect them to the lower tube assembly. So I had to make something that was nice, tough, and robust, and I can use a single screw to clamp on these half inch dowel rods. Now that I have both sections of the lower tube assembly put together, I am drilled these four holes, put these four holes in the sides of the tube so I can mount my altitude bearings. Now this is a 3D printed bearing that's going to mount to the center of this assembly here. And as this is bolted to the side of the tube, these three rails allow the center red section to slide up and down. And that has the altitude bearing, that big round part, um, bolted to it. Now the reason being is that I have, really don't have an idea of where the center of gravity of this tube is, so this gives me some adjustability so I can move it forward or backwards to adjust the balance. So this is for the assembly of the actual mirror cell. Um, I've got my lower ring assembly and this is the actual mirror mount that the uh, telescope mirror is going to be mounted to. I've 3D printed three feet that are going to go onto the bottom side that are going to prevent the collimation screws from resting on the ground when the telescope is taken off of the base. So I'm going to mount these on here and then uh, We'll get going. To have those, I'll drop these springs on here. And I'll put this through my mirror cell. And then I can add my adjustment wing nuts to the bottom. Now I have a nice uh, three-point collimation assembly for my mirror cell. Uh, collimation is just another word for aligning the mirrors so that they all reach a common uh, focal position, alignment position. So there's my mirror cell. All right. 
So right now I have the base uh, for this telescope assembled. Uh, this round disc is going to be for the azimuth and then these cradles here will have Teflon bearing pads for the altitude assembly. I 3D printed these, these bearings here. So these will slide into here uh, and eventually be riding on Teflon pads to control the altitude of the telescope. Um, there's no pads in there right now and this will spin left and right to control the, the azimuth. Um, this was all cut out of half inch uh, birchwood ply um, keyed all together with these little stiffener pieces in here with these rectangular bosses and then uh, this is all keyed down into the base of the azimuth mount if you can see underneath there and then uh, yeah so we get the pads mounted up and then uh, we'll keep moving forward so I'm using eight half inch diameter dowel rods 48 inches long and I need to remove off about three and a half or four inches from them to make sure my eyepiece and focuser are all in the correct position. So I'm doing uh, three quick passes on the uh, NAJ laser and uh, nice clean cuts. One thing I wanted to add to the telescope design was to incorporate some quotes or sayings by famous astronomers and philosophers throughout history onto the half inch wood dowels. Uh, there's eight of them holding up the secondary uh, mirror assembly, the spider assembly. And so I was really impressed with the laser and how accurately it engraved that very small script font at 1250 millimeters a minute. And that requires a lot of laser module movement, a lot of quick small movements, but I was really impressed with how cleanly and accurately it did the engraving and how, how well and legible it came out. So now we're getting down to the final stages of the assembly. Um, I'm doing the strut installation. Uh, the lower two tube assemblies are uh, assembled and the altitude bearings and the balancing rails are also assembled. So it's just a matter of putting the struts in. Then uh, once I'm done with this, I'll mount the secondary assembly up at the top there with the focuser plate. I'll do the mirror installation and then uh, get everything collimated and then we'll do the put the telescope base onto or the telescope tube assembly onto the base and I think we're ready to go. So here we have it all complete. Um, I gotta say I'm pretty pleased with it. Uh, it was a bit of a long project. This is my 3D printed spider assembly and you can see the focuser plate. I've incorporated a Picatinny or Weaver style rail for that reflex finder there which gives you quick alignment on when it, whatever objects you're looking at. You can see the curved veins of the spiders which should ideally cut down on the diffraction spikes which are the four points that you typically see above a star. Uh, altitude, azimuth movement all seem very smooth. I'm pretty pleased with that. You can see the bearings and the uh, balance adjustment right there. The engraving on all of the struts, there's uh, four on this side and four on the other. All of them have uh, sayings or quotes on them. Now the tube assembly itself, I kind of wish the engraving came out a little bit darker. Um, I didn't want to run over it again, but I'm pretty pleased with it. Uh, the interlocking plates of the base. That's the uh, graphics from the Voyager gold record cover that we launched in the late 70s. You can see uh, Orion and Gemini on the bottom of the tube assembly there. So all in all, I think I'm pretty pleased with it. Down on the uh, bottom, you see the, the feet there and the actual mirror cell, and you can see actually see the back of the mirror right there. He said, I'm pretty happy with the movement, the balance, the smoothness, and I think it looks pretty cool. The NAJ Max 4 with the E80 laser module has been invaluable with this build. I could not have conceptualized this design um, the way I wanted to do it and built it out of the materials I wanted to do it without this piece of equipment. Um, so to be able to, like I said, I don't have a workshop. I work out of my basement. So 
to be able to build a five and a half foot tall, six inch F10 Newtonian reflecting telescope with an altazimuth mount in my basement with two pieces of primary pieces of equipment, a 3D printer and a laser, um, I think says a lot about the capability of the tools these days and how much they can enhance your workflow and make your projects a reality. So thanks a lot for watching. I hope this provided you a little bit of information. Uh, Feel free to give me any questions or comments uh, down below, and I hope to see you next time. Thanks a lot.